Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to recognize the real effects of this non-transitory inflation that I predicted that anybody with half a brain could have seen coming back in May of 2020 when the Fed decided to print, uh, I don't know, like 25% uh, of all US dollars in circulation. If you go back to my videos on BitChute, you can see that I was talking about this and going over these charts in uh, probably June of 2020, yet nobody wants to give anybody like us credit that uh, actually talk about this stuff and are actually telling people what's really going on because they called us alarmist, right? While we were trying to downplay what was really the non-threat of supposed Coco jab thing, this, that, or the other, right? The real threat was creeping on up. And I've been screaming from the rooftops this, this entire time about this situation of the US dollar and inflation. It's going to get way, way worse. You had a report come out today. Producer prices surge by 9.6% in November alone. Okay, so the media is now having to admit this because it's becoming way too obvious. And plus, there's a bit of a lag time when you print a whole bunch of money in 2020 and into 2021. What happens is it doesn't necessarily hit the effects of the average consumer right away. It takes months, even a year or two, for it to hit. And that's very, very common. And I've been telling you, it, my subscribers, people that you know watch my channel know, I've been saying, well, I've been saying way before even COVID or any of this as well, to have storable foods, to have gold and silver, to have cryptocurrency, these types of things that are a great hedge against inflation. But even in the in the interim, in the meantime, those could have uh, uh, be harmed as well because when inflation really starts taking off, it, it, in in some ways, and some things actually end up going down at first, and then and and then they retain your value in the end when the crisis is finally over, and you know half the population starves to death or kills each other. Um, you know, like what's going on in Venezuela, right? Uh, or what happened in Weimar, Germany in the, in the 20s. Okay, so these things throughout history um, happen, and the only way to retain your value is like gold, silver. Nowadays, we have cryptocurrencies um, that, that are finite, you know, that, that are scarce, and, and then also hard assets. I mean, that's the most valuable, you know, guns, ammo, food, water, water filters, tools, um, equipment, you know, arid, uh, you know, uh, farmable land, um, wood, you know, stuff like that. Um, obviously that's the most valuable because all the currency and things that store your value, are just tools to really get that in the end, the things that are actually hard assets, even this computer and this, this microphone, you could consider hard assets that is valuable. It has a function. It serves a purpose. Um, you know, it's not just funny money, but what the what the Fed is printing, this is the thing with the Federal Reserve, in case you didn't know. A lot of people don't know this. You know, I know I'm talking to people who do, a lot, a lot of my subscribers are watchers, but the, the Federal Reserve is a private institution that has no oversight of anybody in the federal government or in any state government or any citizens or any institution above it. It's just a, a sovereign bank that prints your money at will and it's not it's private okay it's a private bank it's only it's, it's as federal as federal express right you know federal express is a private company right it's it says federal but it's not really government you, so somehow in 1913 our money supply was co-opted by a group of bankers that convinced Woodrow Wilson to sign away the the, the printing of our money and denationalize it and privatize it so ever since then, they've had total control, and now it doesn't have to be backed by anything. It's not backed by gold. It's not backed by anything. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I mean, it's not backed by anything. I was going to say, but I guess people's confidence. But that's losing more and more. And once that goes away, once that, once the rug is lifted, uh, is, is <laughs> torn from underneath, uh, it's going to get really bad, guys. So check this out. 
We have the M1 money supply throughout the years. This is since 1960. Let's move it up a little bit just so we can get a better view. 1990, the good old 90s, right? So this was the money supply in uh, all the of all U.S. dollars in the world, right? And you can see, I mean, it started it started getting getting ugly right when o Obama was elected. Uh, it started going up. You see that slope is getting pretty steep there, right? Well, look what happened in 2020 under Trump, mind you. Yeah, yeah, under Trump, and it doesn't really matter because Federal Reserve is private, so Trump has no control of it, and neither does Obama. Um, but look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at in May of 2020. Boom. What's this? Boom. You see that? That is. Or, I mean, that is obvious. Obvious catastrophe on the way. That is. Um, and I, right when this happened, it was almost like I remember making a video about. It. I'm like, this is like, is this real? <laughs> like. I was like, is this source, is this for real? Like, am I just like reading something on uh, Before It's News? You guys remember Before It's News? I don't know, that's probably still around. But, uh, you know, is this like a boomer on Facebook sharing like nonsense that isn't real? Um, no, 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 this is real, guys. This is real. Um, I will say this. Now, there, there is one stipulation. There, there, they, they changed a, during this month, they changed a, a regulation, Regulation D, which basically just says, Oh, we're now going to consider more money to be in the money supply because uh, how it worked was the money supply was uh, determined by what's in checking accounts uh, globally, worldwide, right? Uh, how many dollars in all the checking accounts of all the banks worldwide? Um, but they expanded it to some savings accounts too, not all, but some, and that's why it it it, it had that huge spike, but what that was and that's pretty obvious now what it was and this is what, what a lot of people miss when they try to refute you on this chart they say oh it was because of a change of the regulation that it shot up that quick you know the the, the stipulations uh, the guidelines of how we determine it change what it was though was a camouflage for the mass money printing because it, a camouflage to have an excuse as to why the chart is out of control. It's like, well, if we change a bunch of things in this next few months, uh, well, then we can just say, oh, it's because of these changes, and this is why you know the chart went crazy. But if you look at the slope of what the supply, or how the supply has been increasing month to month since that change, that's pretty obvious, the change here, it's still way steeper. Look how much steeper that is than this, right? Look how much steeper that is. Way steeper. So you can see here we're going up almost, I mean, you're almost not even noticing you're walking up a hill right here, right? Just do-do-do-do-do. Then all of a sudden, whew, yeah, that's looking like Mount Everest right there. Even if you want to just go from there, if you're not going to count this one blip for this couple months, man, this is this is not... This is not normal. So this was uh, this change in the regulation of uh, how they count the money supply was a camouflage method to make the consumer unaware, uh, you know, by writing ridiculous articles, um, ridic ridiculous article articles like this. Is it a big deal that 40% of the U.S. money supply was printed in the last 12 months? No, it's not. They're trying to tell you it's not a big deal. So. 40% of all U.S. dollars in existence right now were printed in the past 12 months. 40% were printed in the last 12 months. Okay, we printed more money. The U.S. printed more money in the last 12 to, what, 16 months uh, than it has in the past, like, 200 years or something like that, right? Right? Like, way, and this is only in a year. It's printed more money than it had in, in, in basically all the past 150 years, whatever that number is. It's more, way more than 100 years, okay? All in one year. And, and we're supposed to believe that that's not, not going to have an effect. <sighs> you have the Fed chairman admitting now that transitory is no longer a reflection of of the inflation reality. So this is after the Fed chair. <laughs> Look at this. These people lie to you on purpose. They know what they're doing. They changed this regulation on purpose. 
to confuse people and to have a, a cockamamie excuse as to why the charts are crazy. That was a psychological operation on average economists and the average economist reader or Wall Street Journal reader. Fed Chair Powell still insists inflation is transitory. This is from July. He was saying that inflation was transitory after this obvious, obvious, huge pr printage of money. And... And then you have this this out of NASDAQ, you know, Powell insists inflation is transitory and the markets agree. I'm sure the markets agree. Right. And now he has to come out and admit it and it's not really transitory because the cat's out of the bag and all shit, all hell's about to break, break loose, guys. Just so you know, um, we remember Biden also saying in July this year by uh, saying that inflation is temporary. Yeah, they're liars. They, they're not making mistakes. You guys know that, right? This isn't a mistake. They know what they're doing. They don't want you to be able to invest in the things that are going to protect you. And I'm not trying to tell you what to invest in. I'm not like an advisor, but I will say this. It's pretty obvious, right? It's pretty obvious hard assets. I mean, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm just a meat potatoes guy. What do I know? What do I know? You know? Um, meanwhile, uh, media companies are meeting in secret with the Biden White House to, to discuss more favorable economic coverage. So they're colluding behind the scenes with the Biden administration to mind control people uh, in their news articles uh, to make them believe that, you know, it's not Biden's fault or that it's not as bad as you think it is. Oh, how about this? Out of CNN, why inflation can actually be good for everyday Americans and bad for rich people. Allison Murrow from the CNN business bullcrap outlet. This person and the people who work for the mainstream media despise you. They despise you. They wouldn't tell you. They know this isn't true. They're intentionally lying to you. And this is, this is something to have it so you're caught off guard when the storm really hits. It's already hitting. We're all seeing it. I mean, I'm, I'm even having trouble buying, you know, uh, steaks now. You, I mean, go, go buy a ribeye steak. It's like 30 bucks for like a pound steak or something like that, or a, pound, a pound and a half, two pounds. So it's like way too much money. You can't even eat steak, Okay. So this is, and this is where they're going with this. You ever wonder why it's really kind of interesting too, how somehow the things that they don't want you consuming in their build back better agenda for the next 10, 20 years of agenda 2030 and the great reset and all this stuff where they're trying to reduce carbon emissions and they're trying to uh, do all of these things. They want you eating less meat. They want you uh, driving less miles in your gas vehicle. They want you... Um, uh, you know, consuming less. Yeah, it all seems to fall in line with the economic circumstances. It just so happens meat's going up more than everything else, and gas is going up a little, a little more than everything else, right? Meanwhile, everything is going up, but it does make you wonder, like, is that engineered? Like, I'm a free market guy. I understand we kind of live in a free market economy, but, you know, a lot of these, these things can be manipulated now with the ESG system. If you don't know what that is, I'm not even going to try to explain it. That's for another video. Um, uh, but it's like a, uh, it's like a World Bank. Is it a World Bank? A UN, um, like, guidance system? That you know, BlackRock is 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 basically in, in Vanguard, some of these huge investment corporations that basically own a little bit of every company in the world, every publicly traded company in the world. They they exercise their power in this way. Okay, it, setting guidelines for corporations that they own little bits of stock in called ESGs, where they say you have to promote diversity, you have to uh, limit carbon emissions, you have to do this, that, the other. Um, or we'll pull our funds from, uh, from investing in you. You know, they'll own 5% of like, well, let's just say Tesla or something. 5% of the whole company, right? Um, and for example, that's hypothetical. I, I'm, they, I'm sure they own some of Tesla. I'm not sure what the percentage is, but they'll say something like, oh, you know, because we're like uh, executive, we're, we're owners here. We're, we have this ESG system. 
you know, and it comes from the UN. So this is um, how they, this is how they control the world, guys. This is, this is the real education that you, CNN doesn't want you to know. Allison Murrow trying to tell you that inflation is good for you while people are unable to feed their, fam their families or people are, are unable to find adequate work, you know, an adequate pay. You, you wonder why nobody wants to work at a lot of these places that need workers is because inflation is so high, it's not enough to pay their bills. So they're like, why, why, why do that? It's like pointless. I still can't feed my family making, you know, 15 bucks an hour or whatever it is. And then they want to increase minimum wage, but that just makes prices go up more. So it, we're, I mean, this is doomed to collapse. This is doomed to collapse. We're, we're in a lot of trouble. Um, Yeah, and they, they, they collude behind the scenes and meet with the with the media, and, and Biden because Biden's uh, approval ratings are just so low, and and this is just uh, exacerbating it. And it's true. I mean, it's the economy, stupid, right? A lot of people they're just not going to be happy with the president when when it when the, when the economy isn't doing well. A lot of people are seeing through it now, and I mean, you know, when gas is like four bucks a gallon, they're like ah, you know, they, it's just it's getting bad. It's getting bad. Um. Now, I, if you want to know where this is going, let me show you. And this is um, this is the real end goal. This is the uh, end goal for the global elite, right? This uh, breakaway civilization that, uh, that that hates you, that hates you and your family, that hates the average American. Hates our First and Second Amendment rights and our Third and Fourth Amendment rights. Can, can you believe that the CDC broke the Third Amendment? I'm not going to get into it. Okay. So, Jerome Powell says Fed is considering its own digital currency. They're called CDBCs, Central Bank Digital Currencies. I'm sure you know about cryptocurrencies because I talk about it a lot. Or I, I used to. I haven't really lately, but... Um, I know a lot about cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Well, this is a central bank digital currency where it's not decentralized and it's controlled by a centralized authority. And this is the goal of, of where it's all going. A centralized sort of blockchain type system, except it's, a, it's not really real blockchain because it's going to be centralized, full control, um, in which... You're all. You have no paper currency. You know there is no paper dollar, and it's it's a new dollar, and attached to it is an ID system that is built into the into said blockchain, um, and attached to it is you know your medical records, your social credit score, um, you know whether or not you're a problematic dissident, your political you know leanings, um, and then your credit score, all this stuff all hooked up to one digital identity that they control, a centralized authority. So if you're uh, a non, you know, a non-person, if you've been deperson, somebody like, you know, Alex Jones or like, uh, you know, Nick Fuentes or, or you know, one of these uh, hateful people that, uh, you know, are already being depersoned by private banks um, and stuff like that. And now it's just going to be way easier because it's going to be connected right to the Fed and they'll just shut you off. Uh, or they'll, you know, you know, cause you problems or take away your money or just uh, give you, you know, put an expiration date on your money. You know, that's the other thing they're doing in China. So um, Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve is, is coming out. And th this is admittedly what they're what they want to roll out. Powell, a CBDC would make cryptocurrencies obsolete. They don't like cryptocurrencies. They want to take this technology and pervert it. That's what Satanism is, right? It's about taking things that are good or, or have the potential to do a lot of good it's about taking technologies anything even ideologies and 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 you know like like spiritual forces you see it a lot in progressive christianity and stuff you know what satan does is comes in he comes in he takes something that's good and perverts it and twists it and, and then so that's why he's he's an angel of light right um and it perverts it and twists it and makes it something detrimental right and um, not good for you. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. Um, malicious, right? <laughs> Help me with these adjectives, guys. I mean, I really miss the live shows because then I could I could just ask, give me give me more adjectives for this. What is this? And then I just have a whole you know list of things from from everybody. But 
Um, yeah, so look at this. Uh, they're moving towards CDBCs. CDBCs, CDBCs, CDBCs. You see, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, uh, you know, uh, Polkadot to, to a large extent, Avalanche. These, these are cryptocurrencies that are decentralized, so no one controls it. It's, 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 uh, it's just decentralized and fair market, right? It, it just is what it is, right? It's, it can be used for good or bad, but it's, it's not under one centralized control. And that's sort of like the, the, the greatness of it because you can't censor, you can't stop it. You can't take back a transaction either because it's all decentralized. There's a big difference, guys. And the move, I think this is a controlled collapse of the, the dollar. Um, I think they want to do it a little slowly, a, a little more slower than they're probably going to be able to. Like they, they don't want it to go too quickly because then they could lose control of the situation. It, it's it's a, an accelerated collapse of the dollar that I think might get out of control, right? And the, the, even they, you know, won't be able to control it. And then what happens out of that? That's the question. You know, will cryptocurrencies come in like Litecoin and Bitcoin and, and stuff like that? And sort of just naturally take over, you know, let's say a, a steak at the supermarket now costs, uh, you know, $1,500 and a, and a tank of gas now costs like, uh, you know, $7,500 or something like hyperinflation is out of control. You can't do anything. Then it was just, people would just be like, okay, we're, we're using crypto. But so that's why they have to be able to do this slowly and methodically to, to some extent. My guess is over the next two years, maybe three years, ideally from their perspective, but I think it could just get out of control. And by this time next year, we're going to be living in Venezuela. And, and if you don't have like your, your, your AR-15s and your, your, your gold and your guns, your, you know, your, your Bible, man, you're, you're in a lot of trouble, man. You're in a lot of trouble. And I'm just saying, I'm just saying, but you know, the, the hope is, is that we can overcome this. Now, um, China's digital one comes with an expiration date. Yeah. So this is what they want to build into the uh, new CBDC they, they plan on rolling out from this controlled collapse of the U.S. dollar. It's going to be a, a digital dollar where they, similar to the Chinese yuan, where they have total control of the, the, the system in which it operates, the blockchain in the background, the guts of, of the, the digital system in which you purchase, buy and sell. And so it will be, I'm sure, at first, just linked to your cell phone. Uh, I, can, I can tell you exactly how it rolls. It's just so obvious what they're doing. Uh, it's going to be attached to your cell phone in some way. Um, uh, and, you know, it'll be like a, a QR code. And, you know, the whole thing is like it connects to your bank account, which ha is connected into the CBDC Federal Reserve bl blockchain that has your bank account and your information and your, your identification, but also your medical history. So if, if it's not registered that you've up-to-date vaccine, you can't buy your, your food at the grocery store. Um, if, if it, then down the road, it's the social credit score where it's like, if you're a dissident, if you're uh, a quote unquote white supremacist, which really just means it doesn't mean anything. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't literally mean anything anymore. They, I mean, the leftists and the commies, uh, you know, diversity cult literally call each other white supremacists. They call black people white supremacists now, uh, uh, you know, Hispanic people. It doesn't matter. None of it matters. But, but if you are deemed a white supremacist for some reason, which just means a political dissident, um, they will uh, just shut you off, right? You won't be able to, to buy anything. You can't, you know, do anything, right? You won't be able to go get your tank of gas, uh, you won't be able to go uh, to the uh, the dentist to get your cleaning, right? You won't be able to do anything. Um, but yeah, that's how that's how it's gonna roll. And they're gonna have. <laughs> I love the expiration date thing. I actually, it's some some part of me uh, thinks like if if you did it in a decentralized way, and and it was really fair, an expiration date on currency to encourage people to spend in times of like stagflation maybe is a good idea, but you'd want it programmed in so everybody's in agreement of when that happens and how it happens. But the whole idea is they want to control that, like you have an expiration date on your currency uh, so that you know they can tell you when to spend. And they think that they're the, they're gods of this world. They think they can control the market in the most ideal way rather than just letting f the free market 
and agreed principles and contract law dictate what goes on, right? They, they don't like that. They don't like the, the decentralized, eth eth ethereal, invisible hand uh, of the market to uh, dictate anything. They are communists, right? They're like techno fascist. They're like techno communists, right? That's a, that's the only way I can see it, right? A lot of people always say, like, what? How do we? How do we describe this global elite right now? What they're trying to pull? There's techno communists, right? That's what they are. That's what they are. So, hey, that's where we're going. You know, I can only I can only do so much here. Uh, good old good old uh, resisting the reset can only tell you uh, so much. And you know, they, they're gonna call me crazy. They're gonna call me this, that, the other. Look at this idiot saying that um, you know there's going to be a CBDC rollout in the next couple of years, maybe even the next couple of months. I could be wrong on that. It could go way faster. I mean, look at these times we're in. It's just insane. It's wild. You never would have thought they'd be able to lock everything down in 2020, and then you never would have thought that uh, you know they would stage like a fake riot on you know uh, in, in January of, of this year uh, and and say it was the worst thing since Pearl Harbor. I, I never thought these things would happen, but they did. They did. And now who knows what's going to happen next? Let me know what you think. Drop a comment below. Like, share, and subscribe. I think I'm going to post this on YouTube because I think this is all fair, right? You can say all this on YouTube. I didn't talk about the you know what. I didn't talk about the you know what because when you talk about the you know what, you'll be banned so fast. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, subscribe though on BitChute, Odyssey, and Rumble. Uh, that's where I post most of my videos. Uh, and follow me on Twitter and Gab and join the Telegram group that I just made. We have a lot of fun in there, you know, uh, you know, just posting all kinds of funny stuff. Um, so links for that in the description box below. And share this video, obviously, and like and subscribe. It's been Press. Keep your head up. Stay real and no fear.